Nadine, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. So, so nice to finally meet you. So I don't know that much about you, about your background. I haven't been able to find too much about you. Were you in a health field to start out with? Well, not really, because I started this so early. By 18, I was making my own cosmetics. I started my little business called Artemis Essentials while I was going to university. So in university, kind of unrelated, but kind of related because it was just like a Bachelor of Arts. But I, the, I got to, you know, get into some interesting courses and, uh, you know, I was uh, doing projects on midwifery. Uh, we had one class, uh, class where, you know, my textbooks were like the beauty myth, our bodies ourselves. So kind of looking at like the horrors of the medical history for women oh, yeah. and culture, you know, the IUD, birth control. So I got to explore all these things and write um, essays on it and all that fun stuff. So that was really exciting. And I really feel like I honed in on my writing skills. Yeah. And then while all that's going on, while I'm studying at home, I'm, you know, concocting. Luckily, I, I lived on my own at university, like right off the gate. I knew I didn't want to live in residence. And so I had my own little kitchen and stuff. And I was just whipping everything up. But what kind of led me to that path is while I was skipping school one day, I was watching, I saw Lisa Benet on a talk show and she was talking about the interconnectedness through food, food production, the environment, our body. Yeah. yeah. This was like the 90s. It was before it was kind of more well known. And so really it was like in the course of a month I really dove deep into it and then really transformed how I was eating. Yeah. So from that moment forward always eating organic, not eating processed food. Really deeply, I really went into like, what is going on with all the labels at the supermarket? How do you read them? What are these secondary ingredients? What does this mean? What is that chemical? And while that was completely eye-opening and you know gave me enough information to like not want to eat processed food, it was just like, it was so easy because I was just like, well, no, you know? And so yeah. for me, when I see and I feel the truth of something, you know, it's easy. I don't need discipline because I get it for me and my body or whatever. Yeah. Um, so that's going on and I'm learning that. And then I just, it, while, while I was thinking I was buying the environmental bo body products at the time, the body shop, I realized by looking at those labels, <laughs> oh, yeah. it, you know, the fuzzy peach didn't have any peach, the cucumber face yeah, tumor, right. you know, saw cucumber, all that kind of stuff. And I was just like, oh my God, it's just this whole other petroleum promise land. And so, you know, after the food, it was just like in the next month, it was just like, I'm making my own body care stuff, which really resonated with me because, you know, in grade nine, I did a science fair project on perfume. I was always mixing and concocting all the potions in my bathroom, but obviously they were, I was mixing pre already mixed up, but yeah, I yeah. had that that joy of brewing and mixing and concocting and melting down lip balms and mixing lipsticks together or whatever. So I had that in me, but then, you know, at this time in university, it was just, it got a little bit more real because I could literally make things myself. Yeah. And so also while I'm learning, I'm, you know, looking at uh, all any aromatherapy book I can find, plus like books from the 1800s, European books that really went into perfumery and cosmetics. And it was really neat because they were looking at antiquity. Okay. And I feel like that era is sort of the last era before then we went into the advent of synthetic age. So it's a really rich time to look at the, that European uh, history because yeah. they're also looking at older history. So I love that. But then I would read about things and I couldn't find them. And I had to find them. I had to, I had to like remake recipe, Egyptian recipes. Like why were they putting these things together? And I want to smell that now so I can get a whiff of like what time was like back then. And maybe I can understand something new. So also while I'm blending all this or in my, I didn't know it at the time, but I have a synesthesia. So, because when you think me that too. way, it seems natural, right? Me, so, me too. Yeah, so mine is like color. Okay. So every word I'm saying or think every day, you know, anything has color. And so it was really neat for formulating for me because I feel like I, most of it happens in my mind and then it's a color. It's like painting and mixing colors. Yeah. And then sort of the last moment of creating is the real, is the physical part. And then it it's usually, just right off the bat, 
like 90% perfect, 100% perfect. Because the information just comes from a different place. Yeah, no, I, I completely understand. So as a musician, I yeah. see I see certain certain notes or keys in colors. And yeah. you know, and, and I would I would test this out with some of my bandmates at different times and they'd look at me like I was crazy. But <laughs> you, I, I think there's something to that. I mean, you know, we we talk about things like the blues and the yeah. blue note and all these things. And yeah. part of it is because it does it does trigger some sort of sensation. It does something to our probably to our limbic system or you know yeah. something that really kind of pull, pulls us into a, a very specific awareness and it, it makes sense that somehow our senses do blend in some way yeah i think so too it, and again if you think that way it's just you grow up thinking everybody thinks that way because there's yeah. you just that's you yeah. don't know anything else. And, and and for some reason i think i was also drawn to smells I, oddly enough this is, you, you'll find this interesting i when I, I was an English major who yeah. ended up in, in sciences, of course, <laughs> but, but I went to the Aveda Institute in Minneapolis oh, wow. and I, I only really went there because one of my good friend's moms um, had helped to start the cosmetology program there. She had worked with Horst Reckelbacher who started. I met him school. once. It was Did really, you? yeah, he was really thrilled with my work. <laughs> was really oh, nice. that's, that's yeah. cool. And she had helped him basically put together a lot of stuff in his bathtub when he first, when he started his oh first salon. Yeah. yeah, I know the bathtub stories. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so Cindy, Cindy Wadsworth is her name. And so, um, so I kind of got drawn. I was I actually just decided to go to school because I was having all these back problems. I knew they had a good program. I, you know, kind of kept hearing about it from different people. So I just decided I'm going to go spend some money. Worst case scenario, I'm going to get a lot of massages. And, <laughs> you know, and then, but as part of the training, you know, they, they really, they really kind of push you. We got to go to the, to the Veda lab and see where everything was created. You have to learn basically about all the blending factors and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, you know, it ended up being like, I did, I did a lot of playing with, with essential oils at one point, trying to like make some of my own stuff. And, and, you know, there's just kind of a, there's something that's really fun about doing it too. It's not, yeah. it's, you know, and I, and I think, you know, things probably have changed with Aveda a little bit. I happened to be there right when they were sold by Estee Lauder, mm, yeah. um, which was an interesting moment because they brought, they have this, they had this big spa and they brought a lot of the practitioners who were there to the school. So I ended up basically getting almost one-on-one -on -one education from a whole bunch of different teachers at, at that's one time. Incredible. So, yeah. So, so, you know, my, that's, that's kind of, and as part of that, you also have to learn a lot of Ayurvedic tradition. So yeah. I started kind of looking at, you know, I just, it just gave me, it just opened up a whole new view of like thinking about, you know, what, what th this balance looks like for everyone. That's nice. Yeah, it does open. Cause even when I was like, okay, I'm not going to eat a processed food anymore. I'm going to eat organic. I'm going to make my own stuff. There's a narrowing for a moment, apparent, you know, seemingly of options, yeah. but then you kind of go through this door and it's just the most beautiful banquet. It's like, you know, life just got so much more juicy and exciting. Yeah. Where some people will think, oh, it's so restrictive. Right. I know. I know. And and it's and it, a part of that, though, is is to understand that, you know, the, the realities of where these products are, you know, how they were created and, and why we've gotten into, into this way of doing things. Mm -hmm. Which brings me to your, you know, to your holistic dental book, which I'm, you know, like I am, I'm still trying to process some of it <laughs> and try to figure out. It's one of those books I, I not, not too long ago, I read Matthew Walker's Why We Sleep book. I don't know if you've. Oh, you've, yeah. I've read and, uh, articles on it. <laughs> and, and, and similarly, after, after reading it, I was like, okay, things need to change. So your book for, for dental did, did the same thing for me. And I happened to work with a lot of uh, dental patients through, you know, different prosthodontic care and, and things when people are having TMJ issues, you know, TM joint issues, um, when they're having, you know, bite or palate issues. I also do, I treat newborns. So wow. I, I, I do a lot of work. I, I, start, I started doing that about 15 years ago. It wasn't really where I planned on going, but I love doing it. And I do a lot of work around nursing, lactation work amazing and so i'm 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 in the palette a lot and and i also yeah. kind of see a lot just from working around that area but i also kind of look at this at the cranials and the whole you know, and the system as a whole and i was amazed that you really kind of you know talked about all this stuff in the book too well and i've had such great um moments with uh yeah osteopaths that do do oral work i've yeah. had massage therapists that took the care and it's 
it's such important work. It's in, like, it's so, you know, cause things can get out of the, out of alignment with the body for, you know, so many reasons. And it's just such uh, delicate, gentle guiding back into the flow. It can really, it's, there's a simplicity to it on one level. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just wish more people knew that there's, and, and maybe I'll explain when, when we get into some of this stuff here, I think maybe we can kind of bring it back to how it relates to what I see too. Yeah, and I, I'm, 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 I'm curious to, to know how, why, why you th this was your first book. Is that right? Or? Yeah. yeah, it was my first book. It was, uh, it was like, and it was that feeling of like this, this information needs to get out there. Um, I get, I was really focusing on oral health, I guess, in the, early 2000s and stuff, uh, even in the 90s, you know, the, even at 22, I was, when I first knew about um, mercury fillings and stuff, I was like, okay, I, I don't need to learn anymore. They have to come out. Yeah. And then it was sort of like, again, you're a young woman entrepreneur, you're not on your family dental plan anymore. It's not so exciting to be dropping thousands of dentists. Right. Things. Um, but I found, you know, through my, edu when I was educating myself at university, and changing the way I ate and everything. I also totally came to understand new ways to deal with the body. You know, I was reading books by naturopaths. So very, you know, all the common things like from an eczema or psoriasis or headaches or stomach aches, or it was like, I had a whole new tool set to help people or help myself that yeah. I didn't have growing up. It was just like, here's Pepto-Bismol and a Tylenol or whatever. Right, right. So understanding like, oh, you know, all these, generally speaking, you don't have to, suffer through these things or yeah. like let's look at the root you know maybe constipation's causing into uh, a headache or whatever mm -hmm. so i felt like i really had so much new and possibilities in that area and understanding the body but i did feel like the dental stuff was just less and it also felt like i don't it felt like the body was a lot easier but the mouth somehow seemed like it's like kind of like going to a mechanic yeah can we crack the code of our own knowledge of our mouths? It felt like growing up, there was no room for that at all. I don't think necessarily with our doctors, but somehow the mouth seemed more like the dentist knows and you don't. Yeah. There was yeah. no, none of us, I think, were raised in sort of like a partnership with our health, let alone a partnership with our teeth. It's, it's, it's something we don't get much of an education on. They talk about diet in school probably a little bit, and you learn a little bit of physical fitness and stretching, and you might have a sport that kind of helps push you into that a little bit more. But we don't really have any any education in our mouths. No, and if you do go to the dentist, and if you're a kid that had a cavity, then it's just like bad news. Like yeah. there's no, and then maybe they bring out the tooth thing and show you how to brush better. Right. But really, also now that I am a parent. I just feel like the dexterity for teeth brushing isn't really happening till later yeah. in life. You know, obviously some kids, they got good motor skills. I'm just talking about your average kid. It's like yeah. kind of hurting chipmunks to like get them <laughs> to brush their teeth. So, you know, I also, then I look at like, well, so then we, we weren't born with toothbrushes in our hand. So what is the systems in the body that mm -hmm. are taking care of the teeth and can we help them? Can we, you know, are we hindering it? So those are the sort of questions I like to ask. And so I was thinking about that with my, my teeth. And then I did go to, there was a holistic dentist back in the nineties in Toronto, but really, I do, really not that holistic, you know, right, they, right. they have carrot juice. <laughs> it was kind of a thing, but there's still root canals going on and they would yeah. remove silver fillings. But anyway, the, the hygienist was really cool though. And I had the start of what was a cavity and she's like, you know, go home, make something with those herbs you have like oregano, whatever, and then come back in six months. So I did. And that was like, what is now happy gumdrops. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even know that, a, you know, a cavity had a chance to, to heal itself. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's no idea. That, and, and it's, it's the one thing that I've been kind of picking up from the book. I mean, it relates very much to the way that I think about the body and practice Yeah. Uh, because I've kind of been in more the movement arts, you know, and physical therapy and also doing this kind of more gentle osteopathic work. I'm always thinking about, you know, as a whole, the, the, the systems, how they're working together as a whole. And it gets very sort of detailed, you know, when, when you get into the nervous system yeah. and, and when you get into the lymphatic system and the detox processes, you know, how, how can, how can regeneration happen? How can healing happen? And, you know, what, what 
I don't know why I haven't thought about this with the mouth, but basically you were presenting something that totally made sense. And I'm like, why did, why do I not understand, you know, this, this part of, about, you know, a tooth being able to heal itself? Yeah. I feel like just, I just think we all skipped over that or so we just, you know, I know so it's this feeling that our teeth were like nails or like stones. They just, they were grown. They're the adult teeth. They're set. And, but the thing is, obviously they're attached to the rest of the body and they are alive. Right. So in my questioning of like, well, what would we do without the drugstore and all of its things for our teeth? And you know, what was happening in older cultures and then luckily we have the work in the 1930s of the president of the then Amer American Dental Association traveled around the globe looking at, you know, living skulls and teeth as well as skulls from the past, um, you know, just from, there was like, there's like graveyards under churches, they keep the skulls and he, you know, he just went all over the world and oh, really, wow. so, especially with twins or like in the Hebrides, there was a twin inland and a twin on the coast eating all the harbor food because there's shops and the twins eating the traditional and the, there's photos and it's just like staggering. Yeah how you can see the face developing or not developing without the proper nutrients. Yeah, yeah. And what also we're born with, which I call the invisible toothbrush, is a dentineal lymph system. Yeah. Which a lot of dentists don't even know about. Um, but this of course is, I like I am not a dentist, I'm a person with teeth and I thought we all <laughs> gotta figure this out. So really I stand on the shoulders of, of many maverick dentists that yeah. really questioned their education, yeah. really looked at the body and I'm putting it together because they didn't necessarily get together or some of them aren't alive anymore. Um, so Dr. Ralph Steinman was a dentist and he used to get severe allergies. Like, And then this is in the 50s and then he learns about like kind of cutting out the white food. So mm -hmm. he cut you know, white bread, white sugar and dairy, that kind of thing. And like his, his allergies were so bad, he couldn't practice in August every year. Yeah. And he cleared that out and he was like, you know, really cleared up his allergies. So he felt like he wanted to just dive into the dental research more. So he did, and he st started working at a university. And what he found was that he discovered really the dentineal lymph system, which shows that the teeth are systemically connected to the rest of the body. But mm -hmm. so what happens is we chew and then those substrates activate chemical messengers from the parotid gland and go to the, talk to the hypothalamus yeah. where I feel like everything goes through the hypothalamus. Right, right. I feel like um, it's sort of the granddaddy. And then it, um, so that makes the sig cell signals, chemical signals for, you know, the, nutrients to go into the blood and so there's that whole digestive process then that works its way back up to the mouth and then each tooth is like a tree with roots and it yeah. draws in the blood into the tooth and in the pulp chamber through a series of actions this blood becomes a clear lymphatic fluid mm -hmm. that's fenestrated and is pumped out through the odontoblast onto the surface of the teeth uh, like it becomes like a microscopic sweat that coalesces right. with the saliva. So this movement is a centrifugal force that's going upwards and inwards into the tooth. Yeah. And if we're stressed, hormone stress, like pregnancy, teens, food yeah. stress, as in high blood sugar, low, low quality, low minerals, chemicals, all those kind of things that can stress the body, that system will stagnate and yeah. nutrients aren't being drawn into the tooth. If that continues, those stressors, then the system actually reverses, and then the tooth is like a straw, bringing in bacteria, fungi, and what's it, viruses, yeah. in <laughs> the core of the tooth, and that is the genesis genesis of a cavity. Yeah. So you want to look at diet and nutrition, fat soluble vitamins, minerals, even like adding and I don't have the stats, but they're in the book, but like adding, I think it was magnesium or calcium, like just watching, there was stats about the cavities going, fat, yeah. solid vitamins, D3, K2 together, they usher minerals into the bones. Mm -hmm. So that's going to ensure that your calcium and magnesium is going into the bones. So that's yeah. important, you know, looking at stressors and that's the internal system. And then topically, you know, we can help with, with proper oral hygiene, which I think is going to be a bit different. Right than what we're used to because now besides the chemicals and the ingredients 
that we just, you know, we learned, we know a lot now about sodium lauryl sulfate and that kind of stuff. Yeah. What we don't, didn't know before, like in the 90s, early 2000s, is about the oral microbiome. You're right. We're really, we're just in the past two decades really coming to understand this. And it's so key. We have billions of cells and we just didn't know we also have billions of bacteria, which are yeah. totally running the show. Yeah. And so most of our modern dental practices and ingredients for oral care have been mutating our microbes or even making extinct the microbes in our mouth. Right. And really we need to step back a bit and allow the bacteria to help keep the oral homeostasis, you know, to keep balance in the mouth. And, and is that is that directly related to the actual food that we're putting in the mouth? Is that kind of how it works? Because I, I think a little bit. Um, yeah. You know, obviously you want to work quality with of the food compatible for your body. Yeah. Uh, if you're not compatible with gluten, that you're going to have microinflammation in the mouth. GMOs, glyphosates. Well, the you know they're advertised as not affecting humans and animals because we don't have a shikimate pathway. But all our bacteria do. Well, we, I, I just did a podcast with a regenerative farmer. So oh, cool. And we're, we're basically talking about all, the, all this stuff and, and where it doesn't exist in the soil in the first place. Yes. You, yes. You know, and that's really where it comes from. And, you know, and I, you know, one of the things that I always and it seems like you, you think this way a lot because your, your second book, Renegade Beauty, has a lot of these same kinds of things where you're looking at the patterns of nature. I mean, we're yeah. the intelligence already exists there. We're trying to we're trying to figure out what we can pick up from from those patterns in nature and how it relates. I mean, even when I'm even when I'm reading, you know, your stuff about the mouth, mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I'm seeing these these uh, what are they called again? The the osteoblasts, uh, the, the the things that are that it's it's basically a kind of connective tissue around the tooth, and you know that's yeah. basically that's what I, I work with all the time, right. and the fact and the fact that our you know our, the, the the way that you sort of talk about this this environment of the mouth, I mean it's it's kind of an open wound on one level, but it also has all of, you know that anything can kind of you know get into. But at, at the same time, you know, there are all these different protective mechanisms built into it if the mouth is health, healthy. Totally. Yeah. And it, even though inside of our mouth is vulnerable because the skin is so thin, yeah. it also can really heal quickly. quickly. Yeah. And so you can turn things around pretty fast. Yeah. And I think that's 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 important to hear because I mean it's one of those things. I'm 50. I've I've luckily I, my mom took me to the dentist, uh, a, a decent dentist I think now looking back, and I, I didn't have any cavities as a kid. They didn't really Amazing. do very much, um, but I but she had so many problems with gums that she wanted to make sure that I was sort of you know getting that taken care of early on, and yeah. um, and I and I have had a pretty healthy mouth most of my life. Yeah. But I th I think part of it was that I I I did kind of develop a little bit of a practice. Also being a, a, you know, a struggling musician in my twenties, I decided the one thing I was going to invest in was, was a nice toothbrush um, at, at that point, yeah. which I've been using for, you know, uh, different in different forms for like 25 years, just because I, I felt, I felt like that was one big investment I wanted to make. Mm -hmm. That was wise. Yeah. So why, why, so I'm, I'm curious going back to, to mercury, why was mercury used in the first place as, oh, know, as a filling? Crazy? Yeah. Well, so this is started in the 1800s and it was like, uh, they could, it's shapeable. You know what I mean? Like it, you know, you can mold, mold in it, e and, then can, yeah. and then you can set it in the mouth. And, uh, you know, it's advised because it's quick. So, and children right. get for me. Uh, all those kind of things yeah. but like oh my god the stats on that and like how it affected literally even our dentists our right. dentists were kind of going insane co committing high suicide mercury toxicity i mean that's like the mad hatter story yeah it yeah. used to be in the hats and all the hatters went the, crazy the, yeah so now it's, there's a lot of education in the world. There's countries that do not have mercury fillings, but there's a lot of countries that still do. I believe like Switzerland doesn't. And then there's countries, I think even in states like pregnant women can't have mercury fillings. So there are the signs that this is not cool. And there's a lot of other options, but it still exists. Yeah. And we're just literally, and some people think that silver fillings aren't mercury, but that is, it's a mix. So it's like- okay. 
and it's changed over the years. And apparently in the 60s or 70s, it actually got a bit worse because they added nickel. Okay. So it's kind of like a copper, silver, mercury, nickel situation, Amalgam, but it's yeah. silver. Yeah. And whether you've had mercury in your mouth for a day or 40 years, it off gases its vapor 24 seven. Mm-hmm. And that only increases by about 1500% when you're chewing gum or drinking hot liquids. Wow. It's insane. And this interest from the brain and we, there's mercury, right? Other sources anyway. Right, right. You don't want it's that. It's just adding another, another piece of load. Yeah, another thing. And, and the thing too, though, is there are a lot of dentists that will remove. It doesn't mean, you know, you don't want a dentist removing your mercury if in, you know, the next day they will also add put mercury. Like if they're using mercury fillings, do not go right. there. And you really want to make sure it's done properly. Um, scientists have discovered you got to do it in a certain order for the sides because there's electrical charges. Uh, you also want to do go to a dentist that's got, you know, uses uh, if you need it, if you need a lot of dental work, something like conscious sedation. Mm-hmm. Because what a, a lot of us adults right now actually need to revise some of our previous dental work because it could be a bit of a horror story in our mouths. Yeah. And so you really got to go to the right person because whatever work's done, you know, if you're 50 now and getting work done, hopefully that might be you're switching something and that hopefully is going to take you through the rest of your life. Yeah. You really want to work with a dentist that is leading edge, knowledgeable, looking at, you know, it's a biological dentist, which yeah. is more like holistic, it isn't quite there. Yeah. You wanna make sure they do ozone injections, they do plasma therapy, they know what jaw cavitations are and all that kind of stuff. Where, 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 do, you find, where do you find those kinds of resources? Well, um, you can um, email us and, okay. Also, I think in my books, I give resources, but email us because we have a, and all, there's some articles on our site where we also add resources. Okay. So like the, you know, there's like the Biological Dentist Association, which I can't remember their little initials right now yeah. of the actual society. Um, and then that can help you find people like in your country. Okay. And then uh, in the books and also an article we have on our website, I have questions to ask your uh, prospective dentist yeah, yeah. and that will really help. That's that's really helpful. So, um, you, you you also talked a little bit about fluoride, and I and that's another one of those sort of mysteries for me. Like, you know, just like mercury, why why did why did we start to believe that fluoride was was an important thing to have in our water or in our toothpaste? Yeah, I don't. You know, the history is very interesting, and I'm it's not quite fresh in my mind. Um, but there, I mean, we do there is natural fluoride like in existence. Yeah. And so I think maybe the root of it is like, hey, kind of like, you know, like iodine or like different minerals that we have part of our thing. And then I guess there's also industries that have a waste product. So maybe somebody thought, oh, isn't that a great idea? Yeah. Not sure of that part of history. But what we do know in um, there, when I, especially in Renegade Beauty, I have this chapter it's like, hey, ask your dentist if fluoride's right for you. And then I go through like all these side effects and they're all uh, footnoted. Yeah. So if I bring up a, you know, like it, the main thing that it does is it softens bones and stiffens tissue because right. it, it does something to like kind of the main, and I'm very simplifying here, but like the main sort of enzymatic switch, it just, it disturbs some major enzyme system in the body. Yeah. And you get the opposite happening. Um, so it really can cause a number of, of side effects. It's very well scientifically documented. And there's, yeah. Yeah, there's so I mean, do your research online, but it's, um, yeah, not something that we need for the health of our teeth in that form. So, so what, what, what do you, what do you suggest now? I'm just going to getting into a little bit more of the, of, of the care part of things, but, mm-hmm. um, and one of the, one of the things I, I know that you, you suggest is to, in, in terms of brushing, we've, we've been told so much to brush our teeth right after we eat. And one of your suggestions is to actually do some, to have, have a different care routine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like let all that settle. There's a lot of information when we're eating and some of it can be a bit acidic, but the body can balance it out. 
So I say like wait a bit and then like half hour, hour, if you're so inclined. I also think you really only have to brush, you know, morning and night, it's fine. And then, um, and then the first, we have eight steps and they're kind of everywhere. They're in the books, they're on the website. Uh, people can email us. Like we have free consults for, you know, dental health beauty. We have whole families that come on for consults. So oh, that's, that's know great. that because I know sometimes when it's, there's a lot to absorb because we're yeah. really shifting paradigms here. Yeah. But the first step is to either, you know, you make your own rinse with like water and some baking soda you can make in a a mason jar or you can do water and make a salt brine with sea salt yeah. and then you take a sip and you're swishing that in your mouth and it's just alkalinizing setting the tone rinsing right. things away and that's a great setup for kids too because they can't get every right right all the details but yeah. but but ultimately in in some ways one of the one of the sort of you know founding principles of, of oral care seems to be about trying to keep that ph Yes. Sort of around that level of, of seven or. or you know. Yes. And so that also is can obviously be affected by your whole diet. Right. So not just that immediate. Now I'm rinsing with baking soda, so it will be alkaline. Yeah. But you do, generally speaking, if you were to uh, sporadically test your saliva with pH paper, it should always be slightly alkaline. OK. And, and that's. And- the, sea, the teeth like that because with alkaline saliva, they're doing their job, they're remineralizing, they're like lubricating the teeth, right. which is also why mouth breathing isn't good. And I'm sure you know a lot about oh, that's, that. that I mean, and that's a, one of the reasons that I get referrals to, to me sometimes is because, the, well, I mean, if, if the mouth also gets dry, we start having all sorts of other, you know, problems. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times it's just, it's for apneic reasons. You know, someone's not getting enough oxygen at night. They keep waking up over and over again. Um, and there, there's also, I mean, this is one of the other interesting things that I, that one of the reasons I thought it'd be interesting to talk to you right now is that during the pandemic, I've heard of so many people breaking teeth. Um, and I think there's a, there's, you know, with the stressors, you know, and everything that's been going on with the election cycle in the U.S. and all these different things, I think there's been a tendency to kind of teeth grind at night and people are just breaking teeth or grind, wearing teeth down to nothing. And I keep, you know, I'm getting all these messages from dentists saying, you know, because, because craniosacral work kind of works more on that autonomic response, the, the, those patterns of, of grinding and chewing, you know, in your sleep are actually just, you know, sort of a pattern that's developed in your nervous system. And so one of the things that I'm always trying to do is kind of bring that sympathetic, you know, fight or flight response down in the system and just get, get a little reset. And sometimes that takes, you know, a couple sessions, but I, I see people make big shifts. And even, even when I'm working with, with dentistry, um, if, if the bite, if there's a bite misalignment, I have a prosthodontist that I do a lot of work with, and she, she always recognizes when, there's there's something that just doesn't seem to be structural in nature, and so we we try doing some craniosacral work or some kind of combination of craniosacral massage, and I even teach them sort of you know mobility work to basically free up this whole upper upper part of their chest, neck, um, shoulder area. <clears throat> yeah, and 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 I I even you know recommend to people to sing you know to like really. Oh. O- open up that that whole avenue of expression area where you know just culturally we a lot of times we'll we'll hold back or you know depending on what our what our old old patterns were from childhood will sometimes not be as expressive in that area and that causes us to kind of hold on to a lot of tension in, in the mouth too yeah yeah i've had i had definitely moments where i had to figure out because i was having jaw things um and it was yeah also early on i think it was about 21 just remember feeling it. And then my massage therapist would just, that was the first time I had intraoral. I was just like, oh my God, this is so effective. Yeah. So that was really cool. And then I guess I went to a dentist and then just kind of general, we talked about that. And then he was like, okay, well, there's like um, a TMJ clinic at like where that was like a, what is it when they're testing theories or something? I don't know. At a floor in yeah, a hospital. Research. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. And I go, and I did explain, well, the most relief I found is like when I'm at like the massage is because that's like the kind of the first way I knew even how to deal with it. Yeah. And they were like, you know what the solution was? And they did all the tests and blah, 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 prescription of something like Valium. That was the solution. I was floored. I was like, how? 
So yeah. that, yeah. So that's just it. Rest yeah. of my life. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that's, a, that, that, that's, that's the thing. I mean, and I got into my field because I was basically having muscle spasms. I was having back spasms a lot. Oh, and um, and and they can be crippling, you know. I mean, yeah. and, and incredibly painful. And the only real solutions I was getting at the time were, you know, I was I was doing some chiropractic, having sort of minimal success there, partly because I think I was already so locked up, my body wasn't going to let that happen. But and a lot of muscle relaxants. And then you know, someone also then suggested Valium to me at a certain point. And I was like, but what's after Valium then? You know, like <laughs> the Valium <of> dolls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so yeah, I mean, I, I see, I see this, the, a lot of these correlations too with, the, with mouth care and I, and I'm not sure why we haven't gotten this information. And the more, the more I sort of, you know, dug into the book and started thinking about all these, all these different pieces in terms of like the, the, the materials that were actually making the chemicals that we're making the toothpastes with some of the, the cleaning agents that we put in there that really aren't meant to go in the body. And, you know, as if, you know, the, and, and I think you, you, you said something about <clears throat> there, there's, there's some, there's some printing on there that says harmful if swallowed or toxic if, swa yeah, if swallowed. Yeah, every toothpaste. Right. <laughs> or the ones with fluoride in it. And, and yet, if you put something in your mouth, if you put something on your skin, we're going to absorb like 80% of it or something, right? Oh, yeah. And the mouth even more than the skin. Yeah. Right. Because right. it's just like that little bit thinner. Yeah. And it's all going in. And really, one dental visit and for sure one filling or one sort of thing like that in the mouth that will affect the occipital ridge the jaw yeah. structure like mo a lot of really top dentists have somebody like you in their office yeah <laughs> right yeah, they should i mean i it, it should be part of care because i mean i've i've just had some work done a couple of years ago basically fixing some bad dentistry mm -hmm. and you know you know, and, and you, you had something in, in the book, too, that I really liked, which was sort of like preparation for, you know, having to have dental procedure done, because it, it really is hard on our systems as, as a whole. And, you know, you're, you're sort of talking about just the basics of self-care and even even some herbal and, and vitamin type things you can do to kind of help your system in its recovery process ahead mm -hmm. of time, you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I, I see so much, you know, trauma that comes out of that. I treat a lot of people post dental procedure as well. Right. And, you yeah. know, granted, sometimes it, it, there, there are emergencies and we have to, we have to deal with these things, but I, but I like the idea of starting to get a, a little bit more forward thinking about, about this and even, you know, thinking about it from the, from the perspective of, of our children, Yes. Uh, you know, you, you, you had some like sort of simple ways of starting to think about. And, and, I, and I, because I treat kids, I, I, I do some similar things, I think, to what you were suggesting, which is, you know, you, you engage them in a dialogue in, in some ways, but then you, you just teach them something simple and actionable that they can do. You don't try to overwhelm them with this whole program. Yes. And, and, and so where, where do you start with, in, or at what age do you, do you suggest starting with that kind of stuff? Well, really with, as the teeth come in, and really the simplest thing to do is just like a thin cloth Mm -hmm. with uh, like it's a little bit wet and got a little bit of baking soda on there and you just kind of polish each one you know just have that cloth wrapped around your finger and you'll really get that so you can just start with that yeah. and then um we make a wild child gum drops that you could use helps a bit with teething okay um so there's it's there for that and then when they're starting to brush you know make it fun i didn't even i wouldn't even fully you know kind of give them basics but don't get too yeah. upset about it and then um, it's good not to start them on regular toothpaste because, well, there's flavors that can make appealing, like obviously kids' toothpaste. I'm sure it's like got saccharin and bubblegum. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But why, you know, why get them used to that? So, you know, again, you can always just, we, I make a ton of beautiful and amazing dental products. They're like these botanical biotics, but I always like to give people just like the very simple option because maybe there's no budget yeah. or whatever or they want to start today and i'm telling you baking soda have it in your house forever yeah. and do so many things and, and salt water and salt water yeah those two things if you just take care of your teeth with those two things for the rest of your life you're a thousand times better off than anything from the drugstore so just know that <laughs> yeah. when i talk about the things that we make and then my books also have recipes so you can make your own things yeah, and yeah. 
So uh, the mouth rinsing is good for kids. Also oil pulling is good for kids because all that really is is oil swishing. Okay. And that's Ayurvedic. And um, so it's just taking like the very simplest thing is like a little bit of coconut oil, olive oil or sesame oil, like a teaspoon. Yeah. You swish it in your mouth for 10, 15 minutes. And it binds to-, to, to Yeah, and it draws things out. And I've really seen people like, you know, gums healing, teeth whitening, it yeah. really helps. Um, now kids not gonna, they're pretty fresh, but it gets them in that habit and it's fun and it takes really no skill set. And then there's, uh, I've got fun recipes for making like tooth butter cups. You could get like a silicone tray of like for chocolate, but little tiny cubes yeah. or circles yeah. and, you know, melt the coconut butter, you know, add in things like oregano or peppermint, um, charcoal, activated charcoal, a pinch of baking soda, probiotics. Those are all fun things. And I talk about that in my book. And then you can pour them in, uh, freeze them, pop them out, put them in a mason jar, put them in the fridge and they should be stable at room temperature. Yeah. So that's fun. And then, um, yeah, just having them brush and having them, having it just be fun, a fun part of their thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. And, and mouthwash. Can we, can we talk about mouthwash yeah. for a second? So standard <laughs> mouthwash, it does create, uh, you can Google like over 36,000 cases of oral cancer. Right. Right and I, and I just went through a thing with one of my good friends over the last yeah. year, an oral cancer that was, you know, oh. quite, quite aggressive, had to have a lot of teeth taken out. He's doing fine, but, but, it, but, you know, it, it makes me wonder, I mean, I, 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 I've, I've always kind of intuited that there's a lot going on in the mouth and, yeah. but, but, you know, I, I think I, maybe like you, I have this, I have a little bit more of a sensory feel of like, that doesn't feel right in my mouth or whatever, but yeah. not everybody can, can no. kind of get to that place. And so I always, I, I have not been a, a mouthwash person, my, but I've always been a two times a day brush. <laughs> I, I just feel like there was something about mouthwash that didn't feel Right. It's almost kind of the idea to me, it feels like, you know, the use of antibiotics, like. Yeah, it, it, it is kind of, and some have it in their antibiotics, but it is a scorched earth thing. It's like just literally taking that mouth microbiome, that delicate yeah. ecosystem and just, you know, like pouring an antibiotic on it kind of, or just sort of like, I just yeah. picture us like doing things in our mouth and then all the bacteria are like, ah, yeah. <laughs> running away so that it's very important to keep the diversity intact just like our soil or our gut microbes that's what we're learning right is the diversity and apparently as a human species uh kind of in our north american cultures we've maybe lost a thousand species already in the gut mm. we have about 14 1500 it seems right now and it seems like perhaps we used to have like 2400 species um, and so for the mouth, for example, it's just really interesting research because we see like everybody ha has strep in their mouths, but not, not, it doesn't affect everybody and right, it's a right. bacteria. So now researchers are understanding, well, it's missing some of its like ancestral bacterial buddies that keep it in check. Yeah. And so I think we have these little micro stories sort of in different areas or in different imbalances. Like yeah. if we kind of really studied the microbiome, yeah. you know, we more. I just thought of a, a funny story that I was just heard on uh, Stephen Colbert's show. Uh, so Tiff, the comedian actor uh, Tiffany Haddish was on yeah, the show. Yeah. And she, when she would bring over people for dates, she had, she's like, everybody needs a microscope. And she would get like a DNA sample from the cup and then see, put on a little slide and then check out the thrush candida levels. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I mean, I know where that, I know where that goes a little bit, but that's really funny. It is, isn't it? And she, if it was really high, but I just thought she's pretty smart and sassy. Oh, really smart. That's, that's hilarious. Cause you can really get like, you can kind of have like never ending candida infections too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that yeah. Kind of and it's, and it's pretty common. And, and again, it's, you know, we, we, we're, we're doing so many things that might potentially kill all the good bacteria. And, and, you know, I, 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 the thing I appreciated about your writing was, is kind of thinking about what I like to, what I, I like to kind of give back to people, especially when I'm working with people who are like, they've been through a chronic illness or chronic pain period, and they're trying to, you know, regain this confidence in their body's own ability to heal itself. It's like, 
we we have these this you know ancient intelligence system that's developed over a very long period of time that is meant i mean people didn't have you know crest toothpastes you know exactly. 200 years ago that these are these are these are things these are you know recent things that we're doing and you know if you if you look at the health in, in industry in general we're, we're figuring out more ways to basically bring that gdp of the of the of the health systems higher and higher each each year so that mm -hmm. why is there more money being made in health is the question you know and you know i don't like i don't like to go too far down that road but i think i i, I present it only because I, I think it's important to understand that our bodies have this this innate healing potential already, and we need to understand more about it and how to take care of that. And you know, there are, there are there are small product pieces. We're gonna we're gonna do things to to cause ourselves problems too. So we have to kind of regenerate and heal and do things too. But I mean, that's that seems like such a baseline. And I, I just for some reason I never thought about it in the mouth before. <laughs> to this yeah, level. I like to kind of visit each area of the body and be like, you know, unearthing what's the real story going on here? How does it function without our interference? Yeah. At least understanding that and then seeing, well, you know, if we interfere, can it be, you know, let's keep it going in the same direction and enhance the innate intelligence of the body rather than giving it a counter narrative. Yeah. So, so are there, are there any basics uh, in terms of care that, that you always like for someone trying to make a transition? I know that, you know, probably one of the more important ones to think about is our gums because of the, the yeah. heart gum relationship. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, there's the heart gum relationship. I also feel that like sensitive teeth is really a gum issue um, mm. most of the time. You know, the gums are there to hold our teeth in place. Like and the, tur the turtlenecks as you, the as you Exactly. <laughs> and so, yeah, you want your gum like a nice turtleneck over the teeth and yeah receding gums make it like a cowl neck a v-neck right maybe you've been to the dentist and they're like oh your pocket's at like a six seven eight yeah and uh you want to bring that up so sometimes dentists may not be incurred they might go oh you like they may not have solutions for yeah. that but there are or it might just be gum grafting which is taking you know gum from another part of your skin or sometimes it's just skin from another part of your body yeah like your uh, butt, I understand. Yeah. But what I see a lot is people having to get those surgeries maybe a decade later, same spot, because the root isn't taken care of. Right. Sometimes people have receding gums because of teeth grinding and TMJ. So we're often recommending that they see somebody like yourself. Yeah. Because that is is very key. Often it's or it's aggravated or furthered by just our simple brushing and those techniques. So your brush six months from now should look exactly the same. The bristles shouldn't be splayed or moved in any way because that you really shouldn't be having too much pressure. Okay. The other thing, it's really simple. And you're also really starting high up, like really where your gum meets your cheek. Yeah. That's where you want to start the brush. And Pushing think about it. Or yeah, yeah, it's always, yeah. So the top is down, not yeah. back and forth. And the bottom, it's gum up. Okay. So always in one direction. It might be a little bit slower at first because you got to kind of have a new wrist movement, but you get used to it. Of course, the tops of the teeth, you can go back and forth as much as you want. Right. You know, um, so those are important things for the, that, that technique. And then just some of the ingredients like sodium oral sulfate could be the cause of a, reading, a, a bleeding and a receding gum. Yeah. And, uh, you know, apparently 98% of the US population has bleeding gums. Yeah. So, and that again, this is making us, I think of it like a leaky gum, think of it like a leaky gut, right. We're kind yep. of perforating something and then stuff is kind of getting out of its category and into the bloodstream. Yeah. So though it's important to know that. And then also um, in the eight steps is recommended to floss, but floss twice. And then along the floss, we recommend putting one of our dental serums, mm -hmm. which is where we're working with the essential oils, which are like botanical biotics, but the fun part about our science now is that we're able to see why so many of the ingredients that I love and that we generally love nowadays for oral care, why they've been used for thousands of years. We now have the science backing, like giving us the reasons why. And one of the things that essential oils are so great for, for the use of oral care, things like clove, cinnamon, cardamom, and actually it could be the essential oils or the herb. Yep. Uh, essential oil is just a very concentrated extract of the herb. So like clove, cinnamon, frankincense, neem, 
cardamom, mastic, myrrh, like a lot of those different cultures mm -hmm. uh, have prized those in oral care. And so what we know now is that they act like quorum sensing inhibitors, QSI. And what that means is that the plankton, which are the not friendly bacteria, yeah. they're normally sort of like on their own free floating through the body. And then when the imbalance starts to occur, they are able to gain traction, kind of gang up and do their gene expression and group. Yeah. And the, so quorum sensing inhibiting, the oils are inhibiting the quorum sensing, which is their communication and gene expression. Okay. So that's phenomenal. And that's yeah. something an antibiotic doesn't do. The essential oils are also able to bust through a lot of the biofilms where an antibiotic can't. We've also kind of overused antibiotics, so it's good for us to be able to save those for more important times. Yeah, totally. And then what's so cool is because there's like a, a plant intelligence there, which we can understand a lot through science, but I also feel like with the intelligence of the universe, there's always a certain je ne sais quoi as well. Yeah. But they're able to um, bust up the biofilms, eradicate the bad bacteria, and work in harmony with the friendly bacteria. Right. Which is right. exactly the medicine that we need right now because we need something that can be selective. Hydrogen yeah. peroxide also works in a similar way. It's a very good tool, but you don't want to be using it every day because it can be yeah. pretty astringent on the gums, right. but it's a great thing to have in your bathroom. So so the one, one thing that I, I think is going to be the hardest shift for me is yeah. the is the dry brushing. And, and can you explain why, yeah, why to dry well, brush? Can't... It does get moist pretty fast. It's kind right. of, it just creates a more of a, especially when you're polishing the teeth phase, it just creates a, a greater grip. Okay. Uh, just seems you get more of a polish. And is it kind of about moving some of the good, you know, the good flora in the mouth around to these different areas too? I mean, does, does that no, happen? No, that pretty me? much happen with swishing and stuff, but it's really about like, you're doing the gums first to also stimulate them kind of like dry, like, again, it's not really dry because it's in the mouth, but how we would dry brush the body to stimulate. Oh yeah, that's interesting. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the essential oils that in the combinations we eat too are also voluntary. So they help speed healing. Um, if people floss and bleed, uh, people find, you know, with applying those essential oils, and then you're getting all that good plant matter right into the crevice of the teeth. And people with bleeding gums, you know, it's going to vary, but some people it stops, then it's done in yeah. 24 hours sealed. Some people might take a week, but like it really, they're fast healers um, that really work. I'm just so glad we have them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is, this is amazing, Nadine. I, 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 I want to, you know, tell people that the your other book that's that's out now, um, Renegade Beauty is is kind of like looking at a broader view of the systems. The the the, the dental stuff is in there, and if you want to geek out on all the dent, dental parts of it, it's you know it's worth going through the the holistic dental book, and. But I, but I, I want to maybe have you back at some point and let's let's kind of go into some of these other things, other ideas you have because, to me, this this is these are the kinds of things I'm looking for in, in health. I think there there are one of the reasons that I, I decided to start the podcast and in some ways is because I thought there's there's plenty of resource out there that can be free and there's even plenty of products that can basically be free in terms of like keeping you out of our health systems yes. that's, that, that that's the most important part you know yeah. when we think we when we think of health a lot of people think it's this very sort of boring you know thing but I, I think i think what you what you do really well in your in your books is kind of help people see the 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 joy in actually you know taking care of ourselves and taking care of ourselves is really about what what our whole experience is like, you know. I mean, there's there's kind of an artfulness to just being engaged in that process. Mm -hmm. that I think we should all be, you know, much more tuned into. And I'm, you know, my my hope is to present more of that to people that they, they might actually see it's it's that there's there's an energy there, there's a vibrancy to that that they're not going to get from you know eating fast food and trying to speed through life as quickly as they can to retirement. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Well, I feel like I. I feel like I knew early on that I was just sensitive. You know what I mean? So it even yeah. helped, even if I was being rebellious or like trying coffee oh, at yeah. 15 and pulling them all <laughs> night or something, yeah. really, it wouldn't take me long to go, you know what? I just, it doesn't, I don't feel good. And You're an experimenter. Yeah, I'm an experimenter and I'm sensitive. But I feel like it really helped me 
hone in a sense of discernment that is so fine, yeah. but I feel like I'm there to be that canary in the coal mine of beautiful things because I just can't live with the, I guess I'm just so sensitive to other stuff. Uh, yeah. It's not like I ever had a big health thing and maybe because I did discover my sensitivities early on. Yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel fortunate that I had a health thing and you know, I, I think when you, when it gets to chronic pain or, or chronic yeah. illness, it's it's never, one thing it's never one physiological manifestation it's always like yeah it's a whole lot. and yeah. it's part of the reason why i wanted to present you know something like like the, the mouth where the, I, I can't remember what the, what the quote was but there's a doctor that said 80 like, percent of illness yeah. starts starts in the in the mouth and i think there's something you know to that and it, and it is this sort of you know the that relationship between the gut the and the mouth and the and you know our lymphatic system which is tied to our circulatory system and our heart it's all kind of you know one piece together so yeah. but but just to be able to sort of identify what you can do sort of actionably with the mouth i think is is crucial so thank yeah. you that was that was great thank you thank you <laughs> well i hope to have you on again soon thanks thanks so much for for sharing with us today though for sure i'd love to be back all right Thanks, Nadine. Thank you.